Hello everyone. In this 10th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to explore a little bit of physics and create some movable objects. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So physics in general is something which you see, I would say, in probably 99% of games one way or another. And physics aren't just necessarily gravity. They could mean anything at all, whether you're moving an object, whether you're letting an object fall, whether you're doing anything. And usually when it comes to unity, anything which involves physics will have something called a rigid body attached to it. Now, we're going to do a couple of things in this tutorial just to kind of illustrate how this all works. So, if we take our player, for example, and if we add a rigid body to our player, we're going to get uh, an effect which may not necessarily be what we want to achieve here. However, we will have some objects in this scene a little later on which do have rigid bodies which we'll be able to move and we will get the desired effect from. So, let's go to Add Component and then let's go down here to physics, make sure we are on our player. And then let's go to a rigid body right there and let's click it. And you'll see that new component gets added right at the bottom there. So if we take a look at some of these uh, options here, most of the time you won't need to worry about it too much. By default, a lot of things in Unity do actually come well equipped. Any difference you might have at the moment is if it, you're brand new to all of this, you may have constraints like that. So if you tick, or rather click, I should say, the little arrow next to constraints to bring this down, we'll play around with some of these in a moment. But if we press play now, we should be able to see how our character or player reacts with some physics. Not quite so well. You can see we did not achieve the desired effect there, but you can now see that he is having uh, issues with gravity. So let's untick that. So if we tick all of these now, the freeze position and freeze rotation on the X, Y and Z, then we're not going to have any difference at all, basically because we have effectively disabled any possible uh, gravity or anything to do with physics. And obviously we can work around these a little bit more. So what I want to do now is add in a cube and attach a rigid body to that and see what effect we can come up with. And you'll see that we're able to actually move it. So let's go to game object, 3D object, cube. And let's zero out that position and bring it upwards. And let's just move it over here for now. And as I said, let's add a rigid body to it. So let's click add component, physics and rigid body. Let's not change any of the constraints. Let's leave the mass, drag, everything as it is because we want to use gravity. So make sure that is ticked. And now if we head over, there we go. We can achieve that effect if we want to. Now, you have to remember that there are many, many ways to deal with physics in Unity. And that is just one of the ways we could perhaps move a block. And that is all dependent on how our player is set up. So if we go back to our player and let's let's actually remove the rigid body completely, we will now have a different effect on this cube. Let's head towards it. And you can see we just push it rather than blast it away and off it goes. And obviously at the moment our character is not affected by any kind of gravity so he wouldn't fall even when he goes off this area here. So let me undo that now and we'll attach the rigid body back to the player. And now let's duplicate this cube a couple of times and let's see what effect we can come up with when moving these objects. So I've duplicated it so we have eight cubes now all in one place. Let's press play and let's see what effect we get when we hit this cube now. Cool. So I think depending on what you want to do with your um, objects, you know, how you want to move them. Do you want it to be blasted like that? Do you want it to just be moved? It's all dependent on how your character reacts. So if we do the inverse of that, so I'm going to select all of those cubes and I'm going to freeze 
everything on the cubes. And if I go back to the player and unfreeze, in fact, no, we'll remove the rigid body once again and let's press play. So once again, we're going to have a little bit of uh, an issue there, simply because the way we have set this physics up. So it's important to realize that everything you do when it comes to something like a rigid body is going to have a massive impact on what you're doing here. So once again, let's undo that. Let's have everything ticked on our player. And let's untick everything on the cubes. And now let's increase the mass to 10 on those cubes. I remember when we just went into them and they kind of just blasted off a little bit. Well now, not quite so much. So you can see how playing around with this rigid body is having a positive or negative impact on what you're doing here. So basically if we put the mass as a thousand and try going into our cubes, they are dragging even more. So we're ending up with that original effect that we had. So it might be wise playing around with the mass as well, because in the long term, you can actually create two different effects just by changing that mass. So to put that into practice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the mass back to one. Let's, uh, let's move some of these cubes around a little bit. So let's bring this one here. Let's bring this one next to it. So let's set the mass of this one to 1000. And obviously the mass of this one will be set as one. So these will move depending on how the mass is set up here. So we can go knock it or we can push it. So what, like I say, what it comes down to is how you want it to be set up. One of these two methods is kind of cool. A combination of both of those methods is cool as well. So I do like the idea of, uh, let's say, trying to get through some of these cubes. Um, so let's actually set up a cool little effect here. Let's set it so as this cube, which goes flying off, knocks a couple of other cubes, like so. And let's bring this one up and bring that across and bring that across. And I'm going to get rid of that cube and let's get rid of some of these other ones. And I'm going to have this one over here. And I'm going to increase the size of this one. Let's say it's a bit too tall. So we can move it a bit like a column. And let's see what effect we can come up with now. Cool. So I'm going to keep these movable objects as they are. Um, what I might do is I might quickly rename them. In fact, do you know what? Let's add a material to them as well, because why not? I think we need some material. I'm thinking a nice dark gray kind of color might do the trick. So I've got them all into place. So let's go to our materials. Let's right click, create, C, uh, not C sharp, <laughs> material. I don't know why I said C sharp then. I think it's a bit of a habit. So let's have this as dark gray material and I'm thinking I want it slightly different than how the red is set up I want these to be very not generic looking but just a bit more plain so let's have dark gray about there and I'm going to attach it to the main column uh, let's duplicate that red material now and let's change that to a light gray so something like that and let's rename it to light gray material and let's attach it to each one of those and let's see how that looks cool. awesome so physics is always a lot of fun when it comes to Unity because you can try doing one thing but then end up creating something completely crazy which might end up being either hilarious or might actually be something useful that you could actually put into the game.
So I'm going to now rename these cubes just so as they are not called cube, cube, cube. I'm going to rename them to something more useful while I tell you what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So next tutorial, what I want to do is add in a timer. Now the reason I want to add in a timer is because we want to have some kind of challenge to all of this. And I think, uh, let's say, a 30 second timer would be kind of cool. So basically, if we can't do the level in 30 seconds, then we fail the level and we have to restart. And timer's going to be kind of cool to code, so we'll do a bit more UI with it as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.